Ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of people might wonder why I, I continue to keep finding the strength to do these stories, but I'm not a newscaster and I promise you guys, I'm not trying to be a news station or anything. I'm just a concerned father for the things that are happening to our children. Now the story is gonna have some details that's not gonna sit well with your sensibilities. And I understand that you might not like my opinions, but that's your disclaimer if you need to exit. There's a lot of other people talking about stuff similar to me, but I think that I have a unique opinion. But this story comes out of Colorado, so Colorado is gonna take the damn L today. Yes, a Colorado father, not just a man, but a Colorado father was arrested after police say that he confessed to trying to kill his five-year-old son by throwing him into a gully of ice water off of a hiking trail. And I wonder, can you really be that level of dumb? And then you look at this individual that you see on my screen, I'm gonna give y'all some more details. This man is really as dumb as he looks. Let me see if I can get his face more on this screen. I'm gonna plaster his face on the screen. I want y'all to look at this face. Look at his eyes, he's looking down. That's that guilt. And look at that cut on the top of his head. And I want y'all to understand that that cut on his head was self-inflicted. Let me back it up like a U-Haul truck so y'all can see this again. The cut on his head is self-inflicted, meaning he did it to himself. So I want you guys to ask the pertinent question, why did he inflict this injury on himself? Michael Nomomaya, whatever his freaking name, I don't care how to pronounce his name correctly, whatever. Michael, he's 42 years dumb, I mean old, 42 years old and was taken into custody on suspicion of first degree attempted murder for allegedly inflicting the life-threatening injuries upon his young son, who is not likely to survive according to the Denver Police Department. And I'm getting this article from lawandcrime.com, so thank you very much. Let's keep going. According to an arrest affidavit obtained by the Denver ABC affiliate, KMGH-TV, officers with the Denver Police Department the Denver Fire Department and Emergency Medical Services on the afternoon of January the 12th, which is only a matter of what, 14 days ago from today, responded to a 911 call concerning a young boy who had fallen into freezing cold water along the Cherry Creek Trail. The caller was later identified as Michael Nino Mia. Michael Nino. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders reportedly found the father, Michael, and his son in a fenced-off drainage culvert along the High Line Canal near Boston Street and Cornell Avenue, the heavily redacted affidavit reportedly said. Firefighters located the pair and fished them out of the water. The father reportedly sustained a laceration to his forehead and was taken to Swedish Medical Center for treatment. I want y'all to remember that that was a self-inflicted injury. Upon arriving at the scene, excuse me, unfortunately, the father's son was in far worse condition. Medics at the scene attempted life-saving procedures and rushed the boy to Children's Hospital Colorado where doctors placed him on a ventilator. They reportedly said the boy is in extremely, extremely critical condition and possibly would not survive. And I don't think that he did. I think he actually, I think the current news reports that he did actually pass away. Very unfortunate. Shortly after the incident on January 14th, police released a bulletin seeking witnesses who may have seen Nino Maya, the father, and his son on the trail prior to the boy being injured. The same day, investigators took Nina Meyer into custody on suspicion of attempted murder. So maybe somebody saw something and said something. Hashtag see something, say something. He reportedly waived his Miranda rights and gave authorities a statement, though it was reportedly entirely redacted from, public, uh, from the public version of the police affidavit. 
Denver Fox affiliate KDVR reported that Niedermeyer provided investigators with a full confession saying that he intentionally pulled his son into the frigid water and physically assaulted him until he did not know whether the boy was breathing. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this very clearly. Being a parent is a choice. Even though mothers and fathers have different choices, it's still a choice nonetheless. From releasing your seed to the mother, to the woman, her deciding to produce that child, and you being a father, having access to your child, having your child with you was a choice. Just as well as he could have left the mother, walked away from his child, which is, you know, we, we obviously want people to be responsible for the children that they create. But what we don't want is for somebody to turn around and abuse their children and murder their children. That's not what we want. We rather them look, just gracefully bow out. If that's going to be the case or just don't create children, that's also an option. This child is very small and very young. That means that this child, you know, like you, you had time to think about this. How old is this man? This man is 42 years old. Do you not know any better at 42 years old that having sex will lead to having kids? If you didn't want kids, if you didn't want this kid, you had every opportunity not to produce this kid right there's no excuse for this <coughs> he said that he in his own words he intentionally pulled his son into the frigid water and physically assaulted his son until he didn't know if his own child was breathing he then reportedly said that he began to hurt himself to make it look like an accident before he called 911 to report the incident. Stupid is as stupid thugs. You can't be this level of dumb. The boy's mother and also Nehemiah's wife of eight years, so they're they're married, reportedly told police that Nino Maya said that he was taking their son for an adventure for an adventure prior to the hike and later sent her two pictures of the boy from the trail. But she reportedly began to grow concerned after Nina Maya suddenly stopped responding to her text messages. She also reportedly said that she previously had no concerns about Nehemiah posing a threat to her son's safety. So you would also have to ask what prompted this. Nehemiah made his initial appearance in court Thursday. Prosecutors say that he gave police a full confession to intentionally trying to kill the victim in the case. A public defender representing Nehemiah told the court that his client lives with mental illness and had been neglecting treatment and medication. So I will say this and I'll say it again, like I've said many, many times. If mental illness is a real thing, then I think that if you present a danger to your children, then maybe you should not be a parent if you present a danger to your children. You can talk about mental illness all you want. Deal with it. If it doesn't present a danger to the children, then fine. You learn to deal with it. But I think that mental illness cannot be used as an excuse to get lesser time for a crime that you commit against children. Is my message pretty clear? I don't like, believe it or not, this, this same message that I've been preaching for years People actually have the nerve to get mad at me and want to admonish me for what I just said. But I think that makes perfect sense. I think I speak a lot of common sense. 
It's not to say that you can't have children or be a parent if you suffer from mental illness. What I'm saying is that if your illness presents a danger to children, then you should not have children. Those are two separate freaking things. Hopefully I made myself clear, but I know there are some people out there that are just a little bit slow as if a bottle of molasses were being left to freeze in a freezer. But I digress. <clears throat> he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and a number of other mental health disorders in his 20s. He unfortunately did not accept the diagnosis as I think it happens a lot and did not accept medical treatment. She reportedly said during the proceeding, he feels immense guilt and he feels awful. So you let this go on for 22 years, 20 years, let's just say 20 years to give credit for the, from the time the child was created and born 20 plus years. So it was a known fact that the man that you got married to let me see, so 42. So he was 34 years old when you got married to him. And so he had already been diagnosed 14 years prior with mental illness. And you still chose to marry a man with many mental issues and then produce children with a man who has many health issues. Should you not be held accountable for making your bed and then being and having to sleep in that bed for choosing a mate that is not suitable to be a parent? Because if a person they're saying, hey, this dude got issues, dude, he's not getting treatment, he's not getting help, and you're still going to allow him to be a father. That doesn't make any sense to me, but let's keep going. Prosecutors argue that Nina Meyer planned to kill the boy and to create the subsequent injuries to himself as a cover story. While he indicates that this was driven by mental health issues, he also took steps to make it appear initially that it was an accident, which means that he understood what was going on, which makes this what? Premeditated. These steps included trying to injure himself as well. In other words, prosecutors appear to be arguing that the defendant knew what he was doing was wrong. And I agree. They seem to be posturing against any potential insanity defense raised by the defendant. Evidence that a defendant was capable of distinguishing right from wrong negates any insanity defense under Colorado law. A judge set his bond at a million dollars the judge said that the defendant must remain under home detention and must take mandatory medication if he is released, which we hope that he doesn't get out because he wasn't taking the medication, which means he could probably still be a damn threat. He is charged with first degree murder, attempted first degree murder of a victim under age 12, attempted child abuse that would knowingly or recklessly cause death and child abuse causing serious bodily injury. Let me give you guys a fair usage. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 USC 107. And don't forget, you guys can always help us by simply clicking that thumbs up. So if you look at how many people are watching right now, if you will hit that thumbs up, we want to have one thumb up for everybody that's watching. And that will help share the story. OK, here we go. Let's get it. New at six tonight, we are learning more about this father who is accused of trying to kill his five year old son. He's accused of pulling his child into Cherry Creek last week and then needing to be rescued himself. CBS4's Michael Obeda joins us live tonight working on this story. And Michael, this is really a difficult story to tell. Hey, Karen, it really is. You know, Thursday we learned that that father, Michael Nino Maya, you know, Maya, confessed to trying to kill his son the day he was pulled from the Cherry Creek. 
Last week, firefighters were called to a child who'd fallen into the Cherry Creek. When they got there, they found the child's father, Michael Ninamia, with a cut on his face. They saved the boy and rushed both to the hospital. The child is in critical condition. Michael Ninamia was treated for minor injuries. The arrest affidavit says Ninamia took his son on an adventure hike along the Highline Canal when the tragedy unfolded. Soon police started to suspect this was no accident. The defendant has given essentially a full confession to intentionally trying to kill the victim in this case. His public defender indicated that Michael Ninamia's actions may have been a result of mental illness. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and a number of other uh, mental health disorders in his 20s. Unfortunately, did not accept um, the diagnosis, as I think happens a lot, and did not accept medical treatment. He's now being treated and in a healthy state of mind. He feels immense guilt. He feels awful. The prosecutor countered that Nina Mia could still be a danger to the community. While he indicates that this was driven by mental health issues, he also took steps to make it appear initially that this was accident, these steps included trying to injure himself as well. Now, Nina Mia was given a $1 million cash property surety bond, which will be $100,000 to a bondsman. He's also under home detention and a medication compliance order. His son is still in the hospital. The prosecutor says they do not expect that son to survive. In Denver, Michael Aveca, covering Colorado first. That's terrible. And I want to also address this because we have a person in the chat to say it. Maybe he kept this, this mental illness thing away from his wife. That is very possible. That is very possible. But think about this. Think about this. So if he kept this information from his wife, then that would also prove that he was trying to hide it. So he knew that it was a problem, which also shows intent. I think that if you know that you have a problem, don't wait until you intentionally do something bad to your kid and now all of a sudden you want to scream mental illness. It shouldn't work like that. Shouldn't work like that at all. That shows that you're trying to take advantage of the system. You know that you have an issue, but you're going to you're going to hide it and not tell anybody? No. No. I don't think so. A man is facing attempted murder charges after his son fell through thin ice near the Cherry Creek Trail. Police say Michael Nino Mia's five-year-old son is still in critical condition a week after the incident. Firefighters said the boy fell through the ice last Wednesday and was unresponsive when he was pulled out. An arrest affidavit says investigators interviewed Nino Mia and the boy's mother. The mother told police they'd been together for nine years and she never thought Nino Mio would hurt their son. Nino Mio is facing charges of attempted murder and attempted child abuse causing death and serious bodily injury. Well, the father arrested for attempted murder after he and his son were rescued from icy waters along Cherry Creek has a history of mental illness, including schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenia. And 42 year old Michael Nenemia made his first court appearance today. And in court, prosecutors say Nenemia confessed to trying to kill his son and was driven by those mental health problems. They also say he tried to make it appear like an accident by hurting himself. Prosecutors also said today it appears that little boy will not survive charges would then be upgraded that's to really sad man you know and it's just there's only so much you can do as far as life-saving efforts to try to save this kid but man how strong was this kid to go through something like that at age five years old and intentionally to try to be murdered by your own father and almost survived what a blessing that would have been that would have been so awesome that if he would have been able to survive that but they don't expect this baby to survive, and I don't expect for this dad to be able to survive in court or in jail, right? Life in prison, ultimate penalty under law, I think either one of those will suffice perfectly to get justice for this baby. This baby couldn't speak for himself, nor could he defend himself against the tyranny of his own father, and that sucks, because if we would have considered the fact that if you would have disclosed to this, to this wife of yours that you had mental illness, maybe that would have allowed her to make a clear conscious choice whether she wants to create children with you or not. If she did know, then that means she went into it knowing that you had mental illness and that you turn around and made a bad choice. 
But the fact that he planned this, admitted to this, and manipulated the system, the the uh, the situation to make this seem like an accident, prove that you had intent. And intent should be a first degree murder charge. That should be pretty easy. So I'm thankful that he was at least honest in this situation, give them the information, and we could just allow him to face the penalty under law. But such a tragic, tragic story. And RIP to his son. Did not deserve this, and that baby boy deserved to grow up and be something great. Thank you.